O God, this is a branch sprung from the tree of thy mercy. Through thy grace and bounty, enable him to grow, and through the showers of thy generosity, cause him to be a verdant, flourishing, blossoming, and fruitful branch. Gladden the eyes of his parents, thou who giveth to whomsoever thou willest, and bestow upon him the name Shoghi, so that he may yearn for thy kingdom and soar into the realms of the unseen. Abdu'l-Bahá. The family of Abdu'l-Bahá lived for decades amidst the severe privations of the prison city of Akka. It was a hard life for anyone, especially children. Many died, including the sons of Abdu'l-Bahá. Thus, there must have been happiness in the household on March 1, 1897, when Abdu'l-Bahá's eldest daughter, Ziaya Hanun, and her husband, Mirza Hadi Shirazi Afnan, gave birth to their first son. The child was given the name Shogi, the one who yearns. As a young child, Shogi Effendi was small, sensitive, and intensely active. His mother often had cause to worry over his health, but he grew up to have an iron constitution, which coupled with the phenomenal force of his nature and willpower, enabled him to overcome every obstacle in his path. Shoghi Effendi was reared in the house of Abdu'l-Bahá in Haifa and received the best education possible. Under Abdu'l-Bahá's supervision, he attended the Jesuit school, the most reputable in the city. Unhappy there, he transferred to the Syrian Protestant College, later known as the American University of Beirut, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1918. As a young scholar, one of Shoghi Effendi's greatest interests was geography. He became a prolific maker of maps, a talent which he later used to chart the progress of the cause throughout the Western world. In the spring of 1920, Shoghi Effendi left Haifa for England, where he studied at Balliol College, Oxford. During his time at Oxford, he distinguished himself as a peerless scholar of English. His translations of the sacred writings from Persian and Arabic attain a standard which will never be surpassed. In frequent letters written to Abdu'l-Bahá, Shoghi Effendi described his desire to serve the faith, saying, I am directing and concentrating all my efforts on my studies and doing my utmost to acquire that which will benefit and prepare me to serve the cause in the days to come. My hope is that I may speedily acquire the best that this country and this society have to offer, and then return to my home and recast the truths of the faith in a new form, and thus serve the holy threshold. While in England, Shoghi Effendi often visited the Baha'is of Manchester, one of England's earliest Baha'i communities. When not in school, he would return to Haifa and spend time with his beloved grandfather, serving as a secretary and translator of his tablets. During these visits, Shoghi Effendi met with many pilgrims and distinguished Baha'is who spoke of the progress of the faith in both the East and the West. Amatul Baha Rahia Hanum shares her memories of Shoghi Effendi. The guardian was uh, always very dear to the heart of Abdul Baha. He was his eldest grandson. And of course, the first will of Abdul Baha, because he wrote three wills, what we call